Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to my booth. I'm Jay. Today, we're taking a look at a new interface from a company that I'm not terribly familiar with, Mauno. They're a fairly prolific audio company that seems to come out with mainly streaming-focused stuff. And they sent me this interface to take a look at, see if it's something that voiceover artists might want to pick up and use. So I figured, what the heck, let's give it a, give it a look, give it a gander. Uh, right now, I've got my Shure SM7B plugged into my standard interface, which is the Universal Apollo Solo, as a sort of benchmark so you can hear how this sounds. And then once we run through the features on the interface here, the Pro Studio USB interface, we'll plug the SM7B into that so you can hear the difference between the two. Speaking of those features, let's take a peek at them, shall we? So it feels, the interface feels in build quality pretty much what you would expect and equivalent to a lot of its competitors. This interface is going to be about 120 bucks uh, when it comes out. And it feels almost identical in build and uh, quality to something like a Focusrite Scarlet Solo a PreSonus, etc. Basically everything within that price range. Some of the key differences between this interface and those ones I just mentioned, on the back here, you can choose the power source that you're going to. A lot of uh, entry-level interfaces are purely bus-powered. This one offers you the option to either use DC power coming straight from your wall outlet or bus power. And the benefit to that would be if you wanted to record, say, on your phone or on an iPad, oftentimes phones or iPads may not have the kind of juice to give your interface enough power to drive your microphone, et cetera, et cetera. So having external power can just sort of offload the battery drain and needs of a mobile device like a phone or your uh, iPad, et cetera. And... By the same token, it also has a jack here directly for your phone and or uh, iOS or Android device, which is uh, helpful if that's in your wheelhouse, if you're doing like a mobile recording for a podcast, something like that. And then, of course, here are your monitor outputs if you want to plug in speakers. On the front side, uh, it's pretty standard from what you would expect of an interface as we mentioned before, you can turn on a high Z if you want to plug instruments into either of these preamps. Here's your gain dial. This is how you turn on the phantom power. The LED light there is denoting that. Additionally, there's an LED here which we'll check back in uh, that shows you your peak gain levels. So it'll flash green if you're at a healthy level, yellow if you're kind of dangerous, and finally red, of course, if you're clipping. Same deal over here. Uh, and then here on the right side of the interface, we have the monitoring and headphone volumes. This will control the volume of your uh, monitors, which would be the speakers coming out of the back of your interface. This is, of course, your headphone levels. You can choose to have that either in a stereo or mono signal, which is helpful if you're uh, dealing with music or something that doesn't need to be stereo. And then this was a kind of cool feature. This is sort of your mix knob. If you turn it all the way to the left, you won't hear any information coming from your DAW or your recording software. You'll only hear what's coming through your microphone or instrument preamps here. And then if I turn it all the way in the other direction, counterclockwise, or clockwise, excuse me, uh, you'll only hear information coming out of your DAW. So instead of having to mute your mic or turn your mic off if you're mixing or editing, etc., you can just crank this all the way over and um, listen to that. And then, of course, if you have it dead center pointed at 12 o'clock, it is a mix of both of them, and you can go anywhere in between if you need. So that's a breakdown of the features of this interface. It's pretty comprehensive in what you'd expect. Now let's plug in this microphone here and see what we can hear. Okay, so we've plugged the Shure SM7B as well as these headphones into the Mono Pro Studio USB interface. And I was honestly pretty darn impressed. It's able to drive the Shure SM7B pretty healthily without needing to crank the volume on this. I'll show you what I've got here. 
So you can see that the LED is blinking as I speak and indicating the level. Then, of course, if I turn it up, you'll start to hear it get much louder until the point where it starts to clip. And I don't want to do that. So we're going to do that again. Here's the uh, headphone preamp. And it works just dandy. One, one uh, small thing that I picked up that I found just mildly uh, cumbersome for me. I have uh, not the smallest hands. And these gain knobs are just very, very close to the XLR jack, making it somewhat difficult to turn them when you have the uh, cable in. You can see from the top view there how it just is a little uh, claustrophobic and makes it somewhat difficult to access those, but not in any way that would prevent me from wanting to use this interface. So in practical use, this interface, I think, works really, really nicely. Um, its main drawback is it has a pretty stunted dynamic range. It has a dynamic range of 102 dB, which relative to other interfaces in this competitive uh, bracket, the like 100 to $150 range, is pretty low. It's about uh, the Focusrite Scarlet Solo as a comparison runs at 89 bucks, and its dynamic range is closer to 120 dB. And what that simply means from a voiceover perspective is your audio becomes just kind of crunched dynamically. You're not getting the full nuanced expression of your um, performance in terms of volume and shifting. So if I were to yell and then get really quiet and whispery, the difference between those via this interface's ability to, to process that is just going to be kind of scrunched. So for voiceover, I don't think that that's a, that's a pretty severe hit against it, I think. However, if you're doing something like streaming or podcasting, you don't really need that full expressive dynamic range. You don't really need it. Might be something you're looking for, but it can make your processing just uh, simpler. If you don't need that kind of range, it just eliminates it for you and everything feels somewhat compressed. You'll probably hear the difference between my speech now and when I was using the Apollo Solo. Um, everything sounds just kind of crunched together a bit, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if that's the kind of sound you want. By the same token, the headphone preamps on this are relatively decent. These are not the, uh, these are relatively expensive headphones and it's running them with decent stability and levels. So it works pretty darn well. So all in all, would I recommend this to voiceover artists? Uh, I think if you're starting out, there are probably other options that will take you further in your career and give you more creative flexibility, namely because of that dynamic range issue. As far as anybody else, if you're a podcaster or streamer or something like that, I think this would be a solid option for you, particularly if this company, I don't know if it's in their, uh, if they do this regularly, but if they bundle it with something else, a microphone uh, or pop filter, stand, whatever it may be, it wouldn't be a bad thing to grab in a bundle, I don't think. Um, and it might just make your life a bit easier if you're a streamer or something like that. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you like this stuff and you find it helpful, there are buttons down there to click if you uh, want to help us out. And there are other ways to support this channel in the description below. If you're feeling generous, give those a gander. Lastly, if you want to pick this up, there's a link to it in the description. I don't think I get anything from it. It's just there for you to be directed to it if you want. Uh, until the next one of these, be well, everybody, and I'll see you there. Toodles. Toodles.